Floating. My father often said in his 70s and 80s that he wanted to go in water, floating out beyond the sight lines of our family home on the Long Island Sound, taken by the waves, the salt, the absence of suffering. Instead, he went in cotton. The sheets he increasingly sequestered himself in, cocoon-like, resisting air, sun, society. His back to the water, he drifted in and out of sleep for months before he left one morning, the dazed dawn, just beginning to hint at the season's departure. Gray waves pounding the shore, the distant horizon hazy and hard. By the time I got there, his room was empty, the curtains open to white waves, rustling the wind in the afternoon's glow, the few remaining boats bobbing like sea lions in sun. Drowning never sounded like a whole lot of fun to me, but the next morning I went down to the water, walked in, and released myself to the waves, eyes open to the widened sky. The earth stilled, the sound of salt resounding, seagulls and loons drifting in the blue-white sky like paintbrushes vacillating on their next stroke. I go floating whenever I can now, on the shore, in pools, at the local float spa, head and feet to clouds or ceiling. The water takes me, weightlessly, wandering into a space where every woe is suspended like a soul between earth and ether, and for days afterwards there is silence and salt caked into my ears.